Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As you and me this morning, we are hoping in time, if we can find more stewards, that it may be possible to open all these masses uh, to, for people to be here. But in whatever way we gather, we come around the table of God's Word, the table of the Eucharist, uh, to receive these extraordinary gifts from God, that gift of His Word, our spiritual communion together. Celebrating this Mass for the repose of the soul uh, of Josephine Palmer. As we begin, we acknowledge that we are unworthy to receive these gifts. We pause, we ask God's mercy and a new beginning. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. So let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, pour into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Take Apollos and myself as an example and remember the maxim, keep to what is written. It is not for you, uh, so, for, so full of your own importance, to go taking sides for one man against another. In any case, brother, has anybody given you some special right? What do you have that was not given to you? And if it was given, how can you boast as though it were not? It is that that you have everything you want, that you are rich already in possession of your kingdom with us left outside. Indeed, I wish you were really kings and we could be kings with you. But instead, it seems to me that God has put us apostles at the end of his parade with the men sentenced to death. It is true, we have been put on show in front of the whole universe, angels as well as men. Here we are, fools for the sake of Christ, while you are the learned men in Christ. We have no power, but you are influential. You are celebrities. We are nobodies. To this day, we go without food and drink and clothes. We are beaten and have no homes. We work for our living with our own hands. When we are cursed, we answer with a blessing. When we are hounded, we put up with it. We are insulted and we answer politely. We are treated as the offal of the world, still to this day, the scum of the earth. I am saying all this not just to make you ashamed, but to bring you as my dearest children to your senses. You might have thousands of guardians in Christ, but no more than one Father. And it was I who begot you in Christ Jesus by preaching the good news. The word of the Lord. The Lord is close to all who call him. 
The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call on him, who call on him from their hearts. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and he saves them. The Lord protects all who love him, but the wicked he will utterly destroy. Let me speak the praise of the Lord. Let all mankind bless his holy name forever, for ages unending. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Instruct me, Lord, in your way. On an even path, lead me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On Sabbath, Jesus happened to be taking a walk through the cornfields and his disciples were picking ears of corn, rubbing them in their hands and eating them. Some of the Pharisees said, why are you doing something that is forbidden on the Sabbath day? Jesus answered them, so you have not read what David did when he and his followers were hungry, how he went into the house of God, took the loaves of offering and ate them, and gave them to his followers, loaves which only the priests are allowed to eat. And he said to them, the Son of Man is master of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. We heard this gospel account recently. I reflected then on the Sabbath, and as they say in the House of Commons, may I refer you therefore to the answer I gave some time ago. What I didn't explore on that occasion was the knowledge of scripture which this account reveals. The Sabbath had addressed a real need. People, particularly in the time of the exile, were finding they were having to work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, in order, as it were, to provide for life in this world, and therefore were giving no time, no provision, uh, no preparation for life in the next. The Sabbath enabled them to spend time building their relationship with God, reflecting on his action in their lives, particularly having time to read the scriptures, to reflect on that great gift of God's word, which St. Paul points out is the great gift that he was to bring to the people of his generation. And in the Old Testament times particularly, you rely on an oral tradition, You need time in order to hand on to the next generation what it is that has been handed on to you. And it's revealed in this text. The Pharisees are well versed in scripture. They quote Exodus and they ask why the Lord allows something that was forbidden in that text on the Sabbath. The Lord replies, quoting from the book of Samuel, about the actions of King David and his men. In St. Matthew's uh, account uh, of this moment, um, he actually goes on to quote more, to quote the law which allows uh, the priest to work on the Sabbath and the prophet Hosea that it is mercy which pleases the Lord. Very clear that the Lord, as he has been growing up, has received and reflected on these texts, 
on these days, on this Saturday, dedicated to Our Lady. Uh, we might give thanks for her that she handed on that gift uh, of Scripture to her child to give thanks to for St. Joseph for that faithful uh, bringing. I would like to thank you too for acting, as it were, in the, in the, uh, the, the role of parent for the way in which you have so generously provided the gifts of Bibles for our young people uh, in the various youth groups uh, in the parish. Today, they are receiving copies of your gift, copies of that Bible, copies of the Word of God. It will enable them during the course of this term and the activities of the youth group to read and to reflect on the Word of God, led by the parish CYF team, led by their teachers in school, led by their parents. They can have a real impact. I still have on the shelf in my room, um, uh, to, I don't just leave it on the shelf, I do take it down and read it, a Bible which was given to me when I left primary school. It's a wonderful way of enabling the next generation to hear that word of God. And it's good, too, for each of us to consider the way in which we might deepen our knowledge of God's Word. There are the various study courses coming up over the next season. Do please consider joining them. They're very Scripture-based. They will enable us to reflect on those texts. They will give us that ability to deepen, to develop our relationship with God. It will give us confidence when we, in our turn, in our generation, are challenged by the Pharisees. And at the very least, perhaps we should spend time this Sabbath just reading, perhaps even just rereading this Gospel text, reading that reading of St. Paul as he reflects on the gift of God's Word, perhaps too reading the Matthew text to compare them and to realize the extraordinary richness that there is there. And in doing so, to start a pattern, not working seven days, 24 hours a day for life in this world, but giving time to prepare, to develop that relationship with God, to prepare for life in the next. We've all gathered here, dear sisters and brothers, to celebrate the mysteries of our redemption. Let us therefore ask, Almighty God, that the whole world may be watered from these springs of all blessing and life. We pray for all who have vowed themselves to God, that with his help they may faithfully keep to their resolve. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for peace among nations that delivered from all turmoil, the peoples may serve God in freedom of heart. Lord, in your mercy. For the elderly who suffer from isolation or sickness, that they may be strengthened by our love of them as sisters and brothers. Lord, in your mercy, for our young people, that they may grow in that knowledge of God's word, in that confidence of a relationship with him. Lord, in your mercy, and we pray for all those who've gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, and for all those who mourn their loss. Lord, in your mercy. And on this day dedicated to Mary, we ask that she join her prayers with ours as we say. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with your blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, he'd lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. 
And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the time had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own here in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying... Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with, your, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other that sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of things to mention. Can I thank the flower team? who've done an extraordinary job. You can't see all the flowers around the edge on the candles, but done a fantastic job. So thank you uh, to them. They've particularly, I know, done it this weekend because it's the first of the weekends when we will be celebrating the confirmation of our young people. So do please keep them in your prayers. Five o'clock tomorrow evening, uh, the first group of 12 will be here. There are four Sundays, there are almost 50 candidates uh, in all. Um, so they'll be here for their, their confirmation. Um, that does mean um, that evening prayer on Sunday evenings for the month of September will be at 7 p.m. rather than at 6. Reminder that the evening prayer also includes a time of adoration and then finishes with benediction. If you'd like to be part of that, please do. 
uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Uh, if there are any prayers that you would like included, candles lit for those intentions, please email them as usual uh, to, to office at cpd.church. Reminder that in a moment um, there will be a coffee with the clergy, a coffee chat, uh, hobnobs, um, and uh, you're very welcome uh, to join. Uh, 11 o'clock, the details are on uh, the uh, parish website. Uh, we're also uh, in the email. Finally, can I just apologise? I mentioned earlier uh, that Saturday is traditionally a day of dedication to Our Lady, so I was debating whether or not um, we would be in white for that dedication or in green because it's a Saturday. I managed somehow in my confusion uh, to leave the tabernacle and the chalice veil in green and to put on the, the white myself, so we have a mixture of the two. Uh, please understand, when you reach my age, you'll discover um, my, my brain is, is starting to go. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.